call uh, Pisita, Honourable Pisita Sam Lotulwinga. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's an honour to speak on this, the Returning Offenders Management and Information Bill. Uh, before I do, though, sir, I, I must um, um, convey my thoughts and prayers to the people of Paris, France, and all those that are uh, caught up in terrorist conflicts around the world, sir. But returning to this bill, Sir, the, uh, the Minister, um, and can I congratulate the Minister of Justice, um, the Honourable Amy Adams, for introducing this bill, and it's taken some time to, to work through what are some complex issues, sir. Um, and it is about, as she's already stated in her first reading speech, it's about balancing the safety and security of the New Zealand public with individual liberties, as the last speaker has mentioned. Um, but it is in response to um, the changes in immig immigration laws in Australia. And this has been a process where we've been working alongside our, our, um, our colleagues in Australia, as well as the officials, in order to bring about um, a framework for change that will be enduring and lasting, sir. And, um, you know, the corrections officials have um, formed part of that um, group um, and have visited Canberra. And, you know, I was in Australia in July where we signed a memorandum of cooperation uh, in order for the information and the sharing of information from the states um, through to our corrections department here in New Zealand to ensure that that cooperation and that level of collaboration is uh, expected and certainly is required. So, at present, the vast majority of deported offenders are not subject to any formal management on their return to New Zealand. And this has been the case, as the Minister stated, over a number of years. So this is the first government, the first government to intervene and to respond to this need. And what it does is it solves this problem by giving corrections and police the powers that are necessary to supervise these defaulted offenders on their return to New Zealand. And sir, so that will be consistent with the approach that we take to managing released prisoners from New Zealand's own prisons. And it does that by allowing corrections to manage the risk of these people that they pose to the public. And a number of these um, offenders have been convicted of serious crimes, and the government's duty is to protect our citizens from harm, and that's what this bill is about. Sir, so the last um, speaker did talk about um, protecting the rights of these um, deported offenders and these criminals in terms of um, their citizenship rights. Well, sir, she was, um, it was the Labor government that actually allowed the law, uh, we're, we're part of the agreement um, with the Australian government to, to curtail some of the New Zealanders' rights in Australia. So she knows that, we know that, and the people in New Zealand know that. And I think the second point to make around some of these um, deported offenders is, you know, if they, if they didn't want to give up some of their rights in Australia, then don't commit the crimes. Don't commit the crimes. Is that something simple to ask of some of these offenders? Well, I think it should be made, uh, Dr Smith. I think, you know, you give up some of your rights when you give up, when you commit crimes. And in terms of the reintegration services, corrections are working alongside organisations like PASS, um, organisations like Goodwood Park and NUMA in order to provide some of these social services, and it's a collaboration within government. So corrections will work alongside police, will work alongside the Ministry of Justice, as well as the Ministry of Social Development to provide some of the services that these uh, returning offenders may require. Um, but we cannot compel them to take up those services because obviously they are, uh, are citizens returning to New Zealand who uh, have the ability to, to take up those services or not. As the Minister has already said, the length of the supervision period provided by the Bill is clearly link linked to the length of the prison sentence imposed on the deported offenders in those overseas jurisdictions. And the prison sentence is overseas, but so the longer the supervision period will be um, that they have overseas, sorry, the longer the prison sentence, the longer will be that period on their return to New Zealand. So, for, for example, those on life sentences can be managed for up to five years out, in, um, out here in New Zealand. Eligible deported offenders will be subject to standard release conditions, 
which are the same as those currently used to manage prisoners in New Zealand. And in addition, corrections, I think this is a really important clause within the bill, will be able to apply to the courts for the imposition of special conditions. Special conditions on deported offenders where it will help to reduce reoffending and enhance public safety. And I think the, the, the last member that spoke should, should consider that point and consider the fact that, um, that the Department of Corrections, through its chief executive, can apply to the courts for special conditions to be imposed. And some of those conditions, for example, can be the imposition of electronic monitoring where it's deemed necessary. So this bill complements some of the changes made in, um, in late December 2014 to enhance the extended supervision orders and introduce public protection orders. Now, I know there have been some questions um, regarding the use of those orders, but there is a high threshold, and those changes were made to, um, uh, to, to meet the need for those particularly high-risk individuals that do require extra supervision. So the bill provides that... Um, this bill provides for corrections to apply for those um, extended supervision orders and public protection orders where appropriate. So I just want to um, sum up by saying that there, there, there is an increased number of deported offenders arriving, not just from Australia, but around the world, um, 250 to 300 per year. Um, I believe that this bill is a, an appropriate response to that, uh, to that need to particularly uh, supervise those deported offenders who are high risk that return to our shores. It is about supervision, it's about monitoring, but it's also about rehabilitation and reinte reintegration, and that's why the support services, corrections will be working alongside a number of government agencies, but also a number of NGOs who do fine work in the community to help these um, offenders reintegrate and rehabilitate uh, as part of, their, um, part of their release into the community. And that's why, Sue, this bill provides corrections of police with the powers to manage some of those risks to the public posed by deported offenders. It is about offenders' rights versus public security, sir, but I will always come down in, in uh, support of public security and public safety, and I commend this bill to the House. Call Kelvin Davis.